So I trained as an anthropologist, but I've moved away from some of the concerns of anthropology into politics, and especially into the politics of citizen activism, where citizens face a state that they don't feel represents them anymore. The focus of my work is a village called Vefchani in Western Macedonia. I'm taking it as an example of the exceptional normal, which is a term that micro-historians like Carlo Ginzburg have pioneered. So you take a tiny case, but it reveals so much more. In Vefchani in 1987, a group of citizens wanted a voice in the way that a mundane water supply problem was fixed in the region. And this escalated into a situation where police came in and used electric truncheons against elderly women in the streets. This was not the ideal of um, self-management and uh, local self-government that people had signed up for and fervently believed in. And so over the next uh, two years, that group of citizens engaged in a series of protests which they called civility against incivility. It's the epicenter of this citizen-led movement, entirely authentic and effective in the end. They bring down a government two years after an event that they're outraged by and they say enough. So it was a real kind of moment of exceptional citizen-led protest in an unlikely place, in a small village, in a socialist country. One of the things that I find really compelling about this story is outside the village it's largely been forgotten. So even within Macedonia people don't know this story, certainly in a wider world no one's heard of it. And so what I'm doing working with colleagues in Macedonia and especially working with the participants in this activism is to really retrace how that came about, like what they were reading, who they were talking to, what inspired them in the face of really strong pressure from a regime that looked like it controlled all the levers of power and yet was in the end undone sitting down with a lot of the participants in this activism. And what I find in those oral history interviews is just how important objects are in triggering, organizing, and maintaining people's memories. The villagers built an anti-monument that is in the main square of the village, naming and shaming the government officials they felt were most responsible for the violence. These badges that they asked people to wear in support of their movement, very quiet, very subtle, but enough to get you arrested. The most banal objects serve as reservoirs of community memory. It's those deep reservoirs of, of knowledge that I'm trying to capture and be a part of the process of passing on. If you believe in citizen-led activism, if you believe in democratic principles, then this is the story that we can all learn from, thinking about the limited resources they had, the way they harnessed what they had, came together and together they were able to pull off this amazing accomplishment. I feel humbled by the opportunity to work on this. It's the ideal of scholarship where you're learning as much as you're sort of relating anything. You you're just you, you get the chance to speak for and represent an incredible richness of experience and commitment that goes way beyond what any of us as individuals can, can, can imagine for ourselves, uh, but gives us a glimpse into that kind of solidarity under extreme pressure as a template for us all to think about how we should act, not just as scholars, but as citizens as well.